Back on Milton Lake, we caught up with Duncan Sharman. Although a top all-rounder, Duncan is probably best known for his innovative float fishing methods. Today, he's going to tackle the margins using a slightly different approach. Well, I've now come down and joined Duncan Sharman on Milton Lake. And I can see you're fishing the float, Duncan, but is that a float, pole float I can spot out there? It certainly is, Paul. It's uh, a pole float on the running line. It right. gives uh, a lot more delicate presentation. It's just a, a nice way of fishing, really. It's uh, Instead of using big floats in close, it's, you can see all the little knocks and taps on the float, and it's just like pole fishing, but it just gives you a little bit more chance, well, I find, when I hook a carp, uh, actually getting one in. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the biggest feature on all of these small, sort of commercially type fisheries has to be the margins, doesn't it? I mean, I'm looking around here and we've got reed beds and lily pads around the edge, and why, why do you need to fish any further out than the margins that a lot of the fish are going to be patrolling around, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, how many times do we see when we go to commercial fisheries, we've got an island in front of us here, and everybody is casting tight to the island because it's a feature. Basically, one of the main features on a commercial lake like this is the margins. Yeah. There's just as many fish going to be, if not more, in close to actually out on the island. So yeah. instead of making life really difficult for you and fishing, you know, an island, it's start off in the margins. And if that doesn't work, then then go to the island maybe. Yeah. But yeah. Um, just don't ignore the margins, concentrate on those. That's the fish holding area. It's, it's a very big feature on a lake. I mean, lakes like this, Duncan, I mean, they have a real mixture of fish in them, don't they? I mean, we've just got just as much chance of catching a nice roach as a cr cruising carp, a tench, or, you know, a common carp. It's... Obviously, you can, you can introduce more bait, which would get more carp into your swim, but in general, fisheries like this are stocked with a variety of fish. Uh, bream, roach, silverfish, you've got your carp, um, tench. So yeah, fishing pellet or maggot in close, you, once that float goes, you, you don't know what it's going to be. You can, you can sort of feed heavier if you want the carp or lighter yeah. if you want the silverfish, yeah. fish on the drop or fish hard on the bottom. It's, uh, you never know what's going what, what's what's to come, come up next. next. Yeah, and I suppose that with a, with a delicate, fine tip on a pole float as well, with those Crusions or big roach that are delicate feeders, you can have a lot more chance of, of catching those, aren't you? Or at least seeing the bites. Seeing the bites, yeah, you, it gives you confidence you've got fish in your swim. A pole float is so much more delicate over a, a, a waggler or a, just a bigger topped float. Mm. You will see bites. My float's just not, hasn't stopped moving, no, it's, it's up and down. Place, isn't it? Yeah, I've got, I've got roach hitting the pellet on the drop. Yeah. It just tells you so much, is it? Because you're getting little lifts as, as fish are hitting the, the bait, you've, the loose feed as you throw it in on the drop, and sideways movements of sort of carp and tench and bream are sort of giving you line bites. You just constantly can tell what's going on in the swim, can't you? That's another bite missed, and that's a carp going up the margins <laughs> that time with the bow waves going out in the yeah, swim. The good fish. Using a pole float uh, can be frustrating at the time because. Um, You've got to find out how the fish, what fish are there. If they're cruising carp, sometimes you have to, instead of keep striking at little little knocks, you just sit on your hands and watch exactly what the float's yeah. doing. Quite yeah. often the float will just dip, come back up, and then a moment later it will go. Right. And that's yeah. how they're having it. You can sit there striking, 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 and missing bites. So if, you, if you, you're missing bites, just sometimes just take time out just to to watch what the actual float is doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes, you know, changing your shot and shotting pattern can can help. Yeah, I think it's, it's safe to say that this it really is an off the rod top method, isn't it? I mean, with the the pole flow will be affected by any drift or wind you've got on the surface. So it's not a, a method that you can where you can fish at two, three, four rod lengths out. You've got to really have it under the rod top and in the margin. But yeah. you know, as we said before, that really is where a lot of the fish are going to be. It does give you the benefit of actually being able to just drop the pole float off the rod tip right up against a lily leaf or a, a stem of rush. Um, but as I say, you co you're not going to be fishing 10 metres out with a pole float. It's no. just impossible. It, the presentation is gone. It is, it is designed just to, to fish maybe a rod length out. 
maybe not even that. You know, the further you go out, the harder it's going to be a pole yeah. flow. So just keep it right in close and just keep feeding all the time. Yeah, I think that's the key to it, isn't it? Is it's, it makes fishing so easy because you're not fishing at any kind of range. You can just use the hold the rod steady and it keeps the float in place. So you don't have to worry about any drift. It makes plumbing up and getting it dead on depth right. You can just lose feed by hand, dead easy. Everything is as simple as possible, isn't it? Yeah, everything, yeah. As you say, it's, uh, it's simplicity. Um, a lot of people might look at it and think, oh, pole float. <laughs> You know, I can't see that or, no, it's, it's keep everything simple. Catching fish is, is basically keeping everything as simple as possible. Yeah. As soon yeah. as you start to complicate things, then um, you lose the basics of, you know, of fishing. But yeah. it really is just keeping the bait going down and uh, steady through the water and, uh, and feeding, really. Feeding is the, is the key to, to building a swim up and catching fish. Yeah. That's a quality roach dunk. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a cracker, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a little a... bit out of condition this time of year, isn't they, after spawning? But come the winter, that would be an absolutely awesome fish. Yeah, it's a shame, isn't it, after spawning, they, they put them through so, through so much. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the second or third one you've had like that this morning? Second one, slightly yeah. smaller than the first one I had earlier, I would have yeah. thought. Yeah, just goes to show the power of the pellets, doesn't it? Yeah, pellets, they love it, every fish loves it, so... Yeah, if you could catch those all day, um, I think most anglers would be, yeah, be happy nice anglers, spawn, wouldn't it? It's just... Uh, Roach that sort of size quality is quite few and far between nowadays. Yeah.